Well, welcome back to number six of our Project Plus uh, playlist. So we're on domain project management concepts, which is 33%. Uh, and we're on 1.6, given a scenario, apply scheduled development and, um, and management activities and techniques. So we're grabbing this information right from CompTIA's Project Plus objectives. Uh, so yeah, this is Project Plus exam objectives. Uh, I'll link to this down below. Uh, we're on domain one, which is 33%. And we're on 1.6, which is right here. Let's go. So um, Project Plus, applying scheduling management activities and techniques. So uh, when we're thinking about upcoming milestones and that activities that we're going to identify, uh, they, they'll be part of a sprint, sprint goal. That's in Agile Project Management, where we think of these small time frames where we focus on specific deliverables and try and get them out quickly. Um, we also need to be thinking about our resource load. So we are assigning those tasks, project tasks, over time to specific team members, resources. Uh, each team member or resource, it, we want to make sure they're not over allocated, so they have too much to do, or underutilized, they don't have enough to do. So we think about uh, estimating techniques. There's lots of ways to approach this. So we can look at historical, uh, how we historically done it. Uh, are there things that we can use and make some type of a mathematical equation to identify how long it will take? Uh, I've seen lines of code. I never really liked that one. Um, uh, but yeah, estimating, estimating the different techniques. And are you going to do it from the bottom up or a kind of top down? So bottom up would be talking to the individual team members that are going to be doing that and assigning a time based upon what they, they think, reminding them about past uh, estimations that they've given and uh, how good they've been, right? Uh, when we, we need to determine contingencies to our resources, uh, to our reserves and have buffers. So uh, sometimes we have risks that occur and that might impact how far along we get and what we're able to accomplish. So making sure we have those buffers in there. We usually don't like to assign the buffers by task um, because then it just really uh, explodes our projects. Uh, so continuing on uh, with this topic, uh, story estimation and story points. So. Uh, story points, they're, they're units used in Agile methodologies to estimate the uh, effort to implement a user story. Um, you consider factors like how complex it is and the amount of work that's involved. When it comes to that, then you have epics and tasks. So epics are large bodies of work that might span, well, span multiple sprints. Uh, they're broken down into smaller workable pieces called stories so that you can work on them during sprints. Uh, when we talk about scheduling tools, uh, these are tools meant to assist in planning and managing project timelines. So some examples of tools that you might have used, Microsoft Project, Monday, Jira, Trello, and many more. So. We need to, every once in a while, we need to look at our baseline and think, uh, have things shifted? Do we need to make an adjustment? So a minor adjustment would be a revised baseline. Uh, this is just uh, changing it slightly to reflect approved changes, uh, that, but it shouldn't alter the original scope or objectives. Sometimes we have major changes that come along that require us to drastically uh, change the baseline. So that would be a rebaseline. Due to significant changes in scope, schedule, or cost. Sequencing. So there are dependencies. You have hard or or mandatory dependencies. These the nature of these mean they can't be avoided. Um, so I like to think about building a house when I think about this, and I know that's not software related, uh, but you need a foundation before you can start putting up the framing, uh, the exterior walls. Uh, with software, 
there are things that you might need before you can move on. Uh, I like to think you need a database uh, before you can go live, right? Uh, a database of the information that's being used uh, it, for most systems. There are logical or soft uh, discrepancy, uh, discretionary ones. So these are defined by the project team um, and they are uh, things that will make it hard to start developing if uh, you don't have certain things. So I mentioned a database in, in, the, in the earlier one. So a database would maybe stop you from going live, but it shouldn't stop you from uh, developing at all. Uh, you should be able to have a, some, some logic um, that could help you move forward. So for example, you might have uh, uh, some sample data that you can use and pretend it's a database and get your program working off of the sample data. Uh, you still need to get the sample data, but it, you don't have a. You can you can develop against the sample data without having an actual the, the actual data in the database. So external de uh, dependencies. Sometimes there are things uh, outside of the project's control that can cause problems with the project. So maybe you're using some software and you need a license, and there's a license negotiation ongoing. Um, but the project's not involved in it. Um, maybe due to social uh, challenges, um, you can't get a license to that project, I mean, to that software that you're, that's needed for the project, so you might have to switch. So there's an external dependency. Then there's internal dependencies. These are relationships between tasks in the same project. Uh, such as one team needing to complete their work before the other. And a great example of this is we need sample data to start to develop, and we need a full-fledged back end uh, before we go live, right? Um, now, there are successor-predecessor relationships. Uh, so start to start means both of them, well, sorry, uh, a certain successor cannot start until the predecessor has actually started. Um, start to finish is the successor task cannot finish until the predecessor task has been started. Uh, finish to finish is a successor task cannot start. Um, sorry, finish to finish is it cannot finish until the predecessor is finished. Finish to start is a pre uh, successor cannot start and the predecessor t task has finished. So just remember thinking the first one is the successor task and the next is the predecessor. So they both have to start. The current task can't start until the last task is finished. Current task can't finish until the last task is finished. Current task can't finish until the, the predecessor task has started, okay? Schedule and maintenance. Um, so we need to have a contingency reserve or a buffer. Uh, this is just some allocated time set aside for unseen events, and it should be on the project level, not on the individual, individual task level. Um, there should be a critical path analysis. Critical path it identifies the sequence of things that uh, determine the minimum project duration. Um, sometimes my projects that I've worked on, uh, the buffer is we're not facing the critical path, uh, and if needs be, we could speed some things up down to the critical path. Um, so Im impact to cadence. So cadence is how quickly you're getting things done, right? Um, and things that ca certain things can impact the cadence, such as maybe you're, where you're working gets flooded or something and you have to work from home, the, the things might slow down uh, in that case. Or they might speed up because people aren't having to commute. Um, so things can affect your cadence and sometimes in, in ways that you might not imagine. Forecasting. Um, trying to predict the future project performance based upon the current performance or trends. Um, sometimes you might be going slow, but it might be speeding up. Um, publication and sharing. So is the dismantling of the project information, the schedule and the updates to the stakeholders. We should be transparent with what we're doing. Um, sprint planning is an agile ceremony where the team def 
binds the work that will be accomplished in the upcoming sprint. Um, backlog prioritization. So this is the process of, of prioritizing the tasks or user stories that have not yet uh, been, been got to based upon their, uh, their perceived importance and value. Uh, and this helps to ensure that the team's focusing on the right things. Okay, uh, that's it for this video. And the next one in the series will be 1.7. We'll see you 